Hey, this is Josh Bryant here. We're in Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm here with Riku and Tom. We, we had a great pig iron classics this year in 2016. The 2015 was great. I think we improved on it this year. And these get, we had people from all over the United States, which is an accomplishment in itself, but even cooler is we had people from all over the world. Tom here's from Australia, and Riku's uh, from Helsinki, Finland. So tell us a little about yourself, Tom, where you're from, and, and, and your full name, and everything else. No, so my full name's Tom Haviland. I, um, I'm from originally New South Wales in Australia, but currently living in Queensland in Brisbane. Uh, yeah, I've sort of travelled a fair bit, but always enjoy coming to the US, so any chance I get, I'll try and come over here. Yeah, my name's Riku Palanen from Helsinki, Finland. First time in the US. Seen quite a bit of new stuff over here. Definitely be back next year. You guys have fun at the meet this year? Awesome mate, very, very good. Yeah, definitely. Both these guys lifted really well, um, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about, so what made you guys wanna to come to the meet and everything else, so? Uh, obviously I've known you for a few years now and respect everything you do, so I sort of, any chance I can to support Josh and obviously knowing that he's gonna put on a good meet, I'll be there, but having come last year was a really, really good meet, very top level lef lifters that I've respected for a long time, so any chance I can to compete with them, I'll be there. Yeah, actually Josh has been doing my training for a while now. In January he told me about the meet coming up, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Awesome. So what do you guys, um, what do you guys end up to tell everybody, what are your guys' best lifts and, and everything else? So what's your best bench press and deadlift at Tom? So there's a bit of a disparity between my training lifts and my meat lifts at the moment. I'm trying to close the gap, but best bench is 556, which, um, to be honest, probably had a bit of a short pause, but fairly legitimate, good lockout. Uh, deadlift is still at 771, which is um, bound to go up soon, but it's sort of... Um, yeah, you're just strong finishing your deadlift. Um, yeah. I think part of uh, what affected Tom a little bit is not to make excuses, he could have got out, I mean, because they say every you know hour you travel is a day, you're supposed to get there early, yeah. and so it's a long flight from Australia, it's something like 24 hours, and, and that's not to... It's tough. It, it makes excuses, up. but it, it does have an effect. It definitely does. Food also is a big thing. Even though it's obviously the same food over here, it takes a while for your body to adjust to get your appetite back. And both times I've come, I've lost literally over 20 pounds within sort of a week and a half of leaving. So that's a big factor. I've got to try and work on that for the next meet we do over here. Try Absolutely. And so you live and learn. Absolutely. Yeah. I've done a 730 deadlift. I was looking for a 750 here. You know, I think. The meat was pretty close, you know. Very close. Yeah, yeah. But uh, next year. Well, you, he, Rick, you also tweaked his back right before he came, so. Yeah. We weren't had, really sure what you were going to Yeah, I didn't have a good back workout in one and a half months before the meat, so. So that yeah. actually went really well considering, yeah, yeah, what, considering happened. what happened. Yeah, What do you guys, so what are some future goals for you guys? Definitely 800 next year. 800 next year, yeah. you heard it here. That's awesome. What about you, Tom? Yeah, 800 is a big one. That's sort of been a milestone for a long time so I'd like to crack that and then hopefully sort of once that's off my back I can start to move into the, the mid eights. What about on uh, bench press for you? 600 obviously is a big one it's sort of it's amazing sort of before I worked with Josh obviously 600 was just a sort of nothing I ever thought I'd achieve and to be honest 500 wasn't so it's only sort of week by week month by month working with Josh I sort of see what the, the potential is so all credit to Josh for that one but definitely 600 in the future. It's kind of embarrassing telling my numbers. <laughs> oh, no, no, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 but definitely 500 on the bench press. You're, you're already approaching the mid fours, so yeah, that's not yeah. like a fantasy or yeah, something. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, so. Um, Take some time. And uh, how, so how tall, how tall are you guys? I think I'm like 5'10". Okay. What about you, Tom? So I'm 6'7", 6'8", 6'8", in shoes, probably 6'7", to be completely honest, but yeah, obviously that's a limiting factor, but something I'd never use as an excuse. It's well, it's it's not a limiting factor if he puts on the weight. So yeah. the thing is, Tom built, you know, at we weighed at three about three thirty. Yeah. And I think he was over three forty before he came over. Like you said, he lost some weight. So, I mean, realistically, if you know, not factoring like real life functionality, but just lifting, to get his best, he's going to be up near four hundred pounds. Well, that's also the same as well. Same with bench, where you realize the potential as you get there. I never thought I'd be at this weight and also be able to walk around relatively comfortable. Obviously there's some 
some drawbacks to getting heavy, but definitely I can see 400 being in the future. So it's just a matter of being able to eat and enough. And building himself the bench show, because if he's, you know, weighs 327 or whatever he weighed right now, you know, 400, all of a sudden his chest is up to here. So he kind of gets stronger by default just by oh, you're building it. yourself the bench, you know, and, and with him, he's so lean, he's not going to have to, you know, he's not going to be obese at, at 400 pounds. But also I can see, obviously it's a common thing for a lot of people, but each pound, two pounds I gain of weight, my bench does get stronger, whereas I don't see as much of a factor on deadlift or squat or anything. So the heavier I get, the bigger the bench will get. And Riku is one of the most explosive deadlifts. So that's gonna, it's going to be an interesting project to him where he goes because, you know, six months ago he was doing, you know, 660 with straps. Yeah. So now here on an off day, he hits 711 like an opener, and, you know, close to 750. So, I mean, his deadlift's gone up, you know, w over 50 pounds there, over 70 pounds in training, and that over that's with without any straps, and it's so explosive. That before he tweaked his back, there wasn't really like an in in sight. I don't think. Well, actually, when we started, I couldn't hold on to six hundred pounds. Was pretty tough. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we did is, you know, some grip work and things like that to bring that up. But it, it was uh, he's gotten so explosive that he's hard to uh, kind of predict of where he's going to end up because, no. you know, but it, it's it's hard to predict in a good way. It's just don't see an end in sight. So what do you guys do outside of powerlifting, like for work or anything? Um, if anything, <laughs> uh, sort of different things over the years. Sort of, that can be a limiting factor too. Things I've done in the past have taken me away from lifting, which it's a hard one where you sort of put a good run together and you're, you're sort of seeing something positive, and then you have to go away for a certain amount of time. It can be a problem coming back. So for me, it's just sort of having a lifestyle at the moment where I can sort of focus on training enough and not have to to leave and. Um, that's sort of my main goal at the moment is just to find something where I can just put together a, a cycle and turn it into a couple of good training cycles and finally start to sort of see where I can get without any sort of variables thrown in. Yeah, I work as a bouncer and uh, now I'll start as a construction manager and that will be for three months. And gotcha. after that, I'll, you know, only, only doing some training, I'll skip the work. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so what do you guys, um, so with you Tom, when you travel, when you've had your more successful training, what's some tips you have on like bringing food and things like that? Uh, uh, just don't be picky. It may not be the best food, but just eat it. That's the thing. <laughs> it's, um, it's all about volume and it can be hard, but as long as you get it down, obviously it's all going to turn into the same thing. So it's just, you drink some horrible things, you eat some horrible things, but as long as it does the bit, that's all you need. There you go. What about you? I actually have to watch my weight a little because I, I need to stay under 242, or at least I want to stay. Yeah, because if you're special being the deadlift, there's not going to be a huge advantage to putting on. I mean, unless you want no. to start doing full weight meets yeah. and go for a huge squat and bench, yeah. there's not a huge advantage to putting on that because you're going to have to breathe when you get down to the bar. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. Um,